But it's definitely dead. Does nothing. Uh, let's see. Lost communication with accessory protocol interface. This is about the stupidest design ever. A lot of people in a previous video felt I was unfairly picking on General Motors for their stupidity. Well, fear not, dear friends, because they are not alone. We have power. I don't think we have a, a communication problem. We don't have a problem with powers and grounds. I think we have a problem with that module. Got a little problem with the flex pipe. I think she flexed a little bit too much. All right, folks, quick follow-up video on the 2012 Ford Explorer. Try to get this right. Apparently words are hard today. A couple of videos back, we looked at this one. It had a dead LCD screen for the radio, uh, climate control, backup camera, all that jazz. We did some diagnostics and then somehow it fixed itself and it stayed fixed for, I think, three weeks. It came in for an unrelated complaint of water leaking onto the passenger floorboard. And while it was on its way out here, the LCD screen died again. So we did some further diagnostics and figured out that it had a bad APIM, Accessory Protocol Interface Module. I also found that it had a broken exhaust flex pipe and it was missing one of the little hangers. Anyway, I've got some parts. We're gonna try to fix it. It has not been easy to get those parts. So. Here is a replacement APIM module. It is a used module. I could not get a new one. It's available from Ford. Costs you about $700, but it's currently on an indefinite back order with no delivery date available. So I have no idea how long it would take to get one of those. I don't want to wait that long and I don't want to spend that much money. The one I got came from a company called FLVP Mods. They have a website, flvpmods.com. I'll put a link to that in the description box. Basically what he does is he buys APIM modules from 2015, I believe, and newer vehicles, used ones from junkyards or whatever. And he reprograms them based on your VIN number. So when you get this part, it's plug and play. You don't have to worry about anything. No updates to the APIM, you know, through the USB or any of that jazz. In order to program this thing, it looks like a real nightmare. You gotta use the Ford IDS software or whatever, then you have to have a USB interface and go in through this background. How does it work? You gotta unplug the USB cable and patch in that. It's not like a real nightmare. There's some kind of a workaround where you can use this Ford Forescan software. I didn't wanna get involved with that. Because I know how that goes. You know, it turns it a 45 minute APIM replacement into a five hour job of me trying to figure out how that software works and you know, who knows if I'm ever gonna see another one of these. So, this is the way to go, as far as I'm concerned. On the exhaust flex pipe, I mentioned in the video that, that nobody had it. Ford had it on an indefinite back order. Couldn't get it from Walker. Lots of people found that AP exhaust had the part number listed and that supposedly they have 62 of them in stock somewhere in a warehouse. I don't know. I'm telling you right now that part does not exist. You cannot get it. I could not get it from anybody. So we're gonna use this Walker Universal Weld-In style flex joint and it should work just fine. Anyway, let's get to it. Okay, the APIM module lives behind this LCD screen. So I've gotta tear all this stuff apart to get it out. These two silver bezels have to come off. Then this face plate, which will unplug all the climate controls and stuff will unplug. We can take that clear out and then a couple of screws. So let's see if we can do this without breaking it. Sometimes it does happen. Try to avoid it when possible. But they're in there pretty good. Well, let's try this one.
Just a pro tip, don't ever try to take these plastic panels off when they're cold. So I brought this car in before lunch, let it soak, warm up a little bit. go. Now the old module just pops off the back of the LCD screen. Be sure to put it on the right way. Okay, we'll plug it in. Just to be safe, I did unhook the battery because I think there's power here all the time if I remember right from the last video. Come on, baby. Do something. Why is it not doing anything? There we go. That's weird. Cool. That's it. That's all we needed to see. It's fixed. We made the right call. So I'll button this up and we'll move on to the next thing. Okay, that's buttoned up. And just as a follow up, the passenger floorboards are nice and dry. So I'm sure the problem was those sunroof drains. I'll grab this guy and move on. Alright, we gotta replace this flex joint here. And the replacement that I have is a little bit shorter. So I think we're gonna end up having to put a piece in here. So we'll probably just cut it at this weld and this weld. Figure out where it fits best and then we'll put a short, little short patch in there. I also have another isolator, which goes on right here, but then the rod that comes over is broken, so we're gonna have to kind of make one, fabricate one. Got some half inch steel rod here. We'll figure that out too. Thought I had another piece of an old junk exhaust pipe around here somewhere I could rob one off of, but I guess I don't.
All right, folks. Here's my makeshift exhaust hanger. I think it'll work fine. I was not able to put the fancy mushroom tip on it. So I just gave it a little dog leg. I think it'll work. Let's see if we can break these bolts off. Because I don't think the uh, isolator is going to go up past that subframe. We better get some slick them. Beautiful. Well, it's not quite as fancy as the factory hanger, but I think it'll do the job. Uh, I probably should have extended this rod, the second rod, all the way out like what they did on the other side, but I don't think it's going to make any difference. It broke here, not here, so yeah, done. Yeah, Ford, I know I hear you. Alright, let's see. Are we in an AM radio? I have no idea how to use this thing. Backup camera work? Yes, it does. Oh yeah, you're gonna beep like crazy, aren't you? We got a full shop. We got a little break in the weather, and yeah, I got work coming out of my ears. Parking lot's full. Lifts are still waiting to be installed. Hopefully get that done soon. I don't know, can't keep up. All right, folks, I think that'll do it. It appears to function as it should. What if we do some of these climate control things? Yep, see, that seems to work. Exhaust leak's fixed. Oh yeah, she's quiet as a church mouse. All right, folks, I think that's it for the Ford Explorer. The APIM module replacement was successful, and I'm pretty happy with the, the services I got from whatever that company was called, F. FVL mods or something like that. Anyway, I'll put a link in the description to his website. Check him out. He does other things too, like you can upgrade from Sync 2 to Sync 3, or you can add navigation to a car that never had navigation. You know, lots of different options like that. And you know, it's not a new module. It is used, but he takes care of all the the hard stuff, which is the programming. And he said that basically the module is made after whatever date that they updated the design. They really don't have any problems, so. I don't think we're going to see this one back anytime soon. Yeah. Thanks for watching, guys. I'll see you next time. I know. You're all screaming, what's in the box? Well, there it is. A circuit board. Loaded with jillions of tiny, tiny little surface mount components. And there's, what, one, two, three, maybe four five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten different processors. There's a lot of stuff going on inside this little guy. Uh, 
yeah. Couple electrolytic capacitors. I don't see any signs of them leaking. They're not bulged out on the top. No obvious problems that I can see. So it could be a cold solder joint. Could be a bad capacitor. Could be one of the many thousands of components on here just got tired and stopped working. I have no idea. Wouldn't have the first clue where to start looking for a problem. I guess you could try to refoil the whole board or something, but yeah, I don't know. I'm throwing it in the trash. Unless one of you guys wants it to fix up or hang on the wall or do whatever. But I doubt you do. Anyway, thanks for watching.